In this example, we want to use Ampere's law to get the magnetic field due to an ideal solenoid. So before we discuss an ideal solenoid, let's kind of illustrate how we can get to the limit where we have an ideal solenoid. So let's start with a um, loop of current. This is what the magnetic field looks like due to a loop of current. It goes round in kind of loops, closed loops. This also is a closed loop. This is a closed loop, but we can't keep on drawing all the, the lines to be closed or else you'll just get out of the page. So this is kind of just an illustration, but all the loops go around in closed loops. And you can see the magnetic field is not uniform. It's very, it, it has different directions depending on the location where you are. Now, if you take a loop and you put it next to another loop and another loop, but they're loosely wound, so the space between the loops is, is big, relatively big, well, the, the magnetic field uh, of that you would get, you're going to get some kind of magnetic field inside, which is pretty much uniform, it's almost uniform, but you're going to get some fringing because the space between the two loop, between the loops, you're going to get some fringing effects, this kind of fringing effect. So if you, any kind of finite uh, windings that you do and you leave some space between the windings, you're going to have some kind of fringing. So the, the case of an ideal solenoid is then what? That you make the spacing between the loops very, very small uh, so that the, the fringing, you can get rid of the fringing, neglect the fringing as much as possible. And the magnetic field inside then would be completely uniform. And that's the, that's the limit that we're going to take in this particular problem. So in this particular problem, we're taking the case where you have a completely uniform uh, region in the middle the magnetic field is the same value everywhere and the magnetic field is zero outside and there's no fringing and this here the current is coming out of the page it's going into the page here so the loops you can't see them i've taken the loops away so you just imagine that the current is going around like this in loops um, if you want to look at the magnetic field due to a coil and a solenoid you can look at it on this video so let's see how we can use Ampere's law to get the magnetic field inside an ideal solenoid. So uh, let's see. We have we need to use integration of B dot ds is mu node times I enclosed. We need to create an Amperian loop and put it somewhere. So what kind of shape Amperian loop would you take and where would you put it? Well, we can show that if you take an Amperian loop that's in the shape of a rectangle, of length L and you put part of it inside and part of it outside. Why do we put part inside and part outside? Because you want to enclose some current. You want to have some current enclosed. And we know that outside the magnetic field is zero, so you get no contribution. You know inside there is a magnetic field. You have here the ds vectors perpendicular to the magnetic field and here perpendicular, so you get zero. So this, will, this shape will allow us to get uh, the magnetic field in an easy way. So let's see. We can cut up then integration of b dot ds over the closed loop into four integrations. You have integration of b dot ds for the top, plus integration of b dot ds for the right, plus for the bottom, plus integration of b dot ds for the left side. We chose to go around ds this way because ds here is in the same direction as the magnetic field, so the angle will be zero. So let's look at each part. The top over here, the magnetic field and ds vectors are perpendicular, so b dot ds is zero. Over here, there's no magnetic field, so you get zero. For the right side, there's no magnetic field, so you get zero. For the left, for the bottom side, here there's no magnetic field, so you get zero. And here, the angle is 90 degrees between B and DS, so you get zero. So the only part that will give you a contribution is this line on the left side. So integration of B dot DS on the left side becomes integration of B DS. Why? Because the angle between B and DS is zero, so B dot DS becomes B DS. Then, if you go to this point or this point or this point, any point along this line, the magnetic field should be constant because it's infinite, the solenoid is infinite, so it doesn't matter if you go up or down, nothing changes, everything is the same. So the magnetic field value should be the same. 
So B goes out of the integration, you get B integration of ds. Integration of ds means you're adding this distance plus this distance plus this distance plus this distance. Basically, you're getting this length. And this length is just L. So integration of ds is just So you get B times L. So this whole integration, the left-hand side, just reduces to B times L. Okay, now we, what about the right-hand side? How could we write down the current enclosed in this rectangle? Is this current enclosed in the rectangle? No. Is this one inside the rectangle? No. Only which ones? Only these are the ones that are enclosed. So if we can numerate that somehow, we can say that there are n number of windings inside the loop, and each loop has a current i. That means the total current enclosed is n times i. So this is a way we can write down current enclosed. N is the number of loops inside, uh, number of current windings inside the loop, going through the loop. And I is the current of each one, so you multiply, you get the total current enclosed. You rearrange terms a little bit, you get mu node N over L I. N over L, the number of loops, windings, that are inside this loop, divided by the length, I'm going to call this a new quantity, small n small n is defined to be the number of loops per unit length. So you can write down the magnetic field then as mu naught small n times i. Now small n is very easy to do. If you get a loop, uh, a cylinder, and you wind a wire around it, and let's say in 10 centimeters, if l is 10 centimeters, you have um, 100 turns. That means small n is 100 over 10 centimeters, and so you get you can get small n very easily it's not something difficult to get practically so it's a more convenient thing to think about instead of thinking about the number of windings in a particular for this particular length you just small think of small n and get it you don't even have to count the number of windings here you can count the number of windings in any length of the wire and then divide by the length of the wire assuming that all the windings are uniformly uh, <coughs> wound and so the distance between the windings is the same. So the magnetic field, you can see some um, YouTube videos again that will help illustrate the idea. And uh, that's it.